Mike Doty is a local pastor in Monk's Corner, and now he wants to be the next town council member on the town of Monk's Corner's town council. I speak exclusively to Mike for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. Pastor Mike Doty, welcome to the award winning Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Quentin. Oh, you're very welcome. I know you're extremely busy, so thank you so much for your time. Uh, obviously, as I just mentioned, you are a pastor in Monk's Corner, and you're well known in Monk's Corner. And now you are actually a candidate in the special election for town uh, Mon uh, Monk's Corner Town Council. And I went back on your Facebook page in which you posted this a couple of days ago. You said this quote, in six days, the town of Monk's Corner is held holding a special election to fill a vacated seat on town council. Obviously, that election will take place tomorrow. You said this quote: "This election is also going to be a very close election, as it has been, as it has as it has a total of five candidates, including myself, and at least one person being pushed for a write in. Please, if you live within the town limits and are registered to vote, take the next few days to do your homework. Let me ask you this, Mike: When voters do their homework, what should they learn about you? Well, they should they should learn about my values. Um, I, I believe fully that people should vote based on their values." Not based on race, not based on religion, not based on on who's friends with who, uh, but but what does a person represent? What do they stand for? What are they going to stand for when they're when they're backed into a corner? Are they are they going to cave in? Or are they going to stand for what they believe? Uh, so I really believe people should should look and research um, more just more than just hey I, I know this person, but find out who they are, what they're about, and uh, what's important to them. Yes, sir. What exactly do you stand and believe on right now? Well. Um, I believe uh, strongly in my family. I love my family. My family is awesome. Uh, I believe in this community. Um, the people here are, are kind and generous, and I want to see this community just uh, develop into to all the potential that it's got. Um, of course, I stand on my faith being a pastor. Uh, that, that's a big part of, of what I stand on. Uh, I'm not going to very often to that too much. It's not time for a sermon. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I really want to see people do the right thing. Uh, I mentioned in, in one of my posts earlier as I was campaigning, I'm really looking for heroes. Um, I really want to see the, the best in people come out. Uh, and if I can help give them an opportunity, whether that's in their business or that's in, in their faith or that's just in, in their sports or athletics, if I can give people an opportunity to, to be the best they can be, um, to, to become a hero, to be somebody that somebody else can look up to uh, and, and really just make this, this town a better place, uh, I'd be honored. And you also said this too, quote, our town need leaders you can look up to. Our town needs people to represent you and your views. How do you, how do the people in Mount's Corner look up to you? Well, um, it's, it's kind of funny. I'm, I'm running for this town council position, but to be honest, I've been leading here in Mount's Corner now for uh, almost 13 years. Uh, so I volunteer over at the high school in the spring with the track team. I'm just a volunteer assistant coach, help out there. Um, we do all kinds of a community outreach as a, as a church, as a congregation here. Um, I, I just get involved every way that I can. Um, and, and that's, it's not anything extra because it's what I'm already doing. And so to translate that over into uh, government, which is essentially a nonprofit entity, uh, to translate that into government, uh, my life isn't going to look a whole lot different. Uh, my goal is still to help people, to, to help move the needle forward, to make people better. Um, so that's, that's what I'm looking to do. And you also said this too, you, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but you said this quote, please don't vote for your friend just because they are your friend that goes for my friends as well. This shouldn't be a popularity contest. I'm asking residents of Monk's Corner to vote for the candidate that represents their values and is capable of being part of the change you would like to see happen here, whatever that change is. Let me ask you this, Mike, what are your values? What are, uh, I value family. I value doing the right thing. Um, I value uh, growth. Um, I value, um, and when I say growth, that, that's been a hot topic here in, in the town of Monk's Corner. Uh, we, we definitely want to keep that small hometown feel. I think everybody loves how, how quaint it is. It's just got this nice Southern charm, uh, but we've got to continue to grow forward in order to provide the, the, the things, the amenities that the people in the community still want. Um, so I, I do value strategic growth. Um, I value big picture thinking. You know, it's, it's, it's not, we're not going to just do things the way that we've always done them and expect to, to do things, to have things differently. Uh, we've got to look at the big picture and say, okay, if we do this, how is that going to affect this? And what does that look like here? And, and what could that look like 10 years or 20 years down the road? Are, are we going to have negative effects because 
because we didn't value big picture thinking. We were just concerned about the here and now. As a matter of fact, you said this quote, I am anti-socialism. I am pro strategic growth, as you just mentioned. Where exactly is that growth right now, Monk's Corner? It's all around Monk's Corner. Um, and when I say all around, it's happening in Berkeley County like crazy right now. Berkeley County is just exploding with all the new plants coming in. Right. Uh, Monk's Corner has, has got some growth happening. Uh, there are some new neighborhoods popping up. Uh, the residents of this community are dying for some good restaurants. Uh, and I've spoken with several people about uh, the restaurants and the little shops and stuff, the small business type things. Uh, and most of them are just saying we don't have the population to support those things. Um, it's, it's available. There's plenty of land here within the town limits. Uh, we, just, we just haven't gotten there yet. What type of 10-year comprehensive plan would you like the town of uh, Monk's Corner to actually adopt? Oh, that's a, that's a great question, Quentin, that I don't honestly have the answer for. Uh, being just a town council person, a single person, um, that, that's going to be a team effort. And it's going to take a lot of collaboration, both with uh, town council, the mayor, uh, but also the county and the state. Um, my goal would be just to get in there and let's, hey, let's start this conversation. Let's, let's talk about where do we want to see ourselves in 20 years and then kind of work that process back. Okay, what's it going to take to get there? Do we have resources necessary? If not, how do we get those resources? What do we do to achieve the vision? Um, my position here at the church, I'm not the primary communicator. I'm an executive pastor. Right. Uh, and so that's, that's really my role. It's, okay, the, the, the senior pastor sets the vision, uh, and then my job is to say, okay, that's awesome. How do we get there? What do we need to do to get there? Uh, and so I would just translate that right over into town, and it's, it's about asking a lot of questions. Where are the resources when it comes to, say, minority and women-owned businesses in the town of Monk's Corner? Where are the resources? Yes, sir. Well, we've got we've got a good bit of minority and and women owned businesses. Uh, relatively speaking, um, there there are more and more popping up. We've got some a nice bakery that's opened up here in town uh, that's ran by a minority and and a female. Um, really, Quentin, it, it comes down to people having the the tools and uh, being equipped to do what it is they've been called to do. I believe there are a lot of people, regardless of, of their race or, or gender, a lot of people that want to do something. They just maybe don't know how to do it or how to go about doing it. Uh, and I'd really like to see people to, to really rise up to that and, and do what it is they feel that, that they've been created to do. Have you been called to run for, Mount, for Monk's Corner Town Council? <sighs> it wasn't anything that was on my radar, mm. uh, I'll be honest. Um, I served over in, in East Asia for a while as a missionary, came back working in the ministry, uh, the the opening came up and it when it just feels like the right thing to do. Uh, right. I, I think it's the next step for me. It, I will never walk away. I say never. I, I can't say never. I don't believe that I'm ever going to walk away from full time vocational ministry. Right. Um, but if I can help this town out, then that's what I want to do. As a matter of fact, you said this quote. I am pro Bible, pro birth and pro family. I believe in the freedom of all religion. However, I believe a profession of faith in Jesus Christ as the only way to true salvation. If you disagree, that's okay. We can still be friends. In the end, one of us will be right and one of us will be wrong. I'm not ashamed to share my faith, but I will not force my faith on anyone. Faith on anyone, that is. I also will not stand for someone telling me I must abandon my faith. Let me ask you this, Pastor. What biblical scripture are you standing on these days? Well, biblical is the entire context of the Bible. There's not one scripture that I can just say I stand on. It starts in Genesis, it ends in Revelation, right. and everything in between. We have to stand. If we if we take any of that and throw it out, or we take any of that and make it higher than the other, uh, we're, we're not standing on truth. Truth. And you also said this too, quote, I believe every person, regardless of faith, race, or gender, should have the right to work, express their beliefs, and build a better life for themselves and their family, providing it doesn't infringe on the same rights of others. I believe in doing the right thing, the right way, even when it's not popular. You say building a better life for themselves and their families. Let me ask you this, Mike. What exactly is the quality of life in Monk's Corner? Quality of life in Monk's Corner is actually pretty good. Now, the income level is, is probably lower than a lot of the surrounding area. Um, but as I said, it's it's an amazing community. And I feel like most people here um, are, are at least happy. You know, they, they may not have everything. Um, the, the amount of free and reduced lunches here in this area is, is pretty high. Um, but when you drive through the community, when you go to a football game on Friday night, People are smiling. Uh, people are having a good time. Uh, regardless of, of, of race, you can walk into a store and, and people, people will say hello. And it's, it's not a big deal. This community is, is awesome in that way. Um, so 
the way I would measure is quality of life. We've, we've got a pretty good standard. Uh, and you, you know, you talk about that income level. This might be an interesting or off the topic question, but with that income level, the way it is right now, how, as far as tax revenue, how much has the town of Monk's Corner lost in the past four years? How much have they lost in the past four years? Yes, sir. Uh, elaborate on that a little bit. Tax as revenue. As, tax as revenue. far as, yes, sir. Potential tax revenue or how the past, how in the past. I'm not following you, Quentin. Okay. Let's, let me talk again about it. Tax revenue. How much has it, the city, uh, the town of Monk's going to lost in the past four years as far as obviously businesses and other entities? Okay. Um, so you're talking about potential tax revenue. Am I correct? You, yeah, we can talk about that as well. Okay. Um, that's a good question. Uh, and I, I don't know, because I don't know how many people have considered coming into Monk's Corner uh, that have chosen to go elsewhere. I know I know Nexton, right. the community over there near Somerville, and that's Berkeley County. Yes. But it is, it's not the town of Monk's Corner, and it's growing like crazy. Uh, I know that Goose Creek has, has gotten some new things in there. Uh, but as far as, as tax revenue in Monk's Corner, we, we definitely are not growing at a, a, a pace that's keeping up with the rest of the area. Uh, where, do you, where do you want that growth to actually be in the next four years? In the next four years? Well, Monk's Corner, as it, as it stands right now, the town limits are a little, a little odd. Mm -hmm. uh, down Highway 52 between the, the, the main area downtown right. and Fox Bank, uh, we have most of the Highway 52, but some of the neighborhoods are not there. There's lots of land out there, and there are developers trying to get in there, um, there and Old 52. There's plenty of space there. Um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the concern is how do we deal with traffic, and traffic is always an issue. Nobody really wants to see this place become as bogged down as, as say, Somerville and or Charleston. Uh, but there, there's definitely room for residential growth there. I would love to see there's a triangle within the middle of town from Heatley and Altman Street, uh, and then 17A and Highway 52. There's a triangle there uh, that would be considered our downtown, our old historic Mons Corner. Uh, I would love to see a nice eclectic mix of of some small shops, uh, good quality, um, mom and pop owned restaurants uh, that, that people can go and, and walk down the street in the evenings, enjoy enjoy the summertime here, enjoy the fall. Um, I would love to see some some new kind of growth there in that area um, and, and keep that small town charm that we that we have. And what exactly is your relationship in the community? What is my relationship in the community? I, you'd have to ask the community, Quentin. Um, <laughs> I, I love living in this town, and I, I don't think I've got too many enemies out there, uh, but, but you'd have to ask around. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and you talk about, obviously, the mom and pop shops that you would like to have in the town among, amongst corn and a half. That's still that small town feel, even in 2020, 2021. What, ex what type of connectivity plan would you have? Um, elaborate again a little bit, Quentin. What, yeah, what that con connectivity plan. What type of economic development plan would you have? Again, that's that's going to have to be a team effort, and I could I could throw ideas out there, uh, but until I get in there, uh, one thing I learned about leadership, Quentin, is that you can you can armchair quarterback all day long, and until you're in there and you're in the trenches dealing with with everybody and everything, um, I, the things I could say are could be totally off base. Uh, so I I don't want to tell you this is what I would do, uh, because until I get in there, I can't tell you exactly what I want to do. Pastor Mike Doty, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to the award-winning Quentin's Close-Ups. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.